antique writing boxes can be notoriously difficult to date. Uh, this is because the writing box was invented back in the 17th century. And from the, from the 1600s up to the end of the Victorian era at the start of the 20th century, basically the style and the design of antique writing boxes hardly ever changed. By the middle part of the Victorian era, uh, writing boxes had more or less fallen into three or four, maybe five uh, distinct types or styles or designs, and they never really changed from that. Um, except on rare occasions, and uh, as a result, dating them can be really tricky, uh, because you can't say that a particular model was made from this date to this date, or this date to this date, because it, it simply didn't happen, um, unless you can date it by the manufacturer, and uh, even that can be very tricky, because not every box uh, was marked or signed by the manufacturer. Anyway, uh, this is one of my writing boxes which actually has a date on it. And uh, when you're trying to uh, piece these things together, when you're trying to learn more about the history, uh, dates like this are obviously very, very important uh, and very uh, very useful, very helpful. I picked this box up at a local flea market and uh, on the top it has a date and the name of the original owner. It says S. Neverson and the date is 1886. And you can see here, it's very nicely engraved into the brass uh, top plate and handle of the box. Uh, this box is covered in black Moroccan leather. It is a very nice condition, but these boxes, they're very, very, very hard to find in good condition. And the main reason for that is because of how they were made. Um, the boxes themselves, the carcasses, they're all made of wood. But all the attachments, all the hinges are not made of wood and they're not made of metal, they're not made of brass, they're not made of steel or anything like that. Uh, they are actually made more often than not out of fabric, out of leather, out of cotton and because of that um, they very often fell apart just due to old age, due to wear and tear, due to daily use and because of that, finding boxes like this in working condition, in good condition, which you can use, which you can display, which you can carry around, is very, very hard. And boxes which are in working condition command very high prices. Um, I was able to get this one relatively cheaply just because uh, it had been sitting for goodness knows how long, uh, months and months and months and months at the flea market, and I finally managed to just grab it. Uh, anyway, I will stop blathering, and uh, I will give you a tour of the box. Uh, this little brass cartouche um, 
I put that in myself when I bought the box. It did not have a proper uh, keyhole cartouche, so I had to uh, go out and buy one. This is the key for the box. Uh, again, when I bought the box, it didn't have a key. Um, I had to cut this one myself by hand. Um, I I did that with a simple metal file and I was just filing away and testing the key and testing the lock over and over and over again until I finally got the shape right and until I finally managed to uh, operate the lock. So uh, here goes. The key goes in here and unlocks the box. Now, here we have the box. Now, this is the uh, storage caddy for papers, for envelopes, for letters, for documents, all that kind of stuff. Then, in front of that, we have uh, a pencil wood case pencil, it's never been sharpened, never been used, it came with the box uh, it was probably placed there by Mr. Neverson himself and he probably never used it uh, below that is a very very thin ivory page turner now this did not come with the box, this is from my personal uh, collection of antiques which I put into the box um, now this is extremely thin ivory I mean you can see it's almost translucent uh, so I'll just turn that around you can see there just how thin that is it's almost paper thin so I'll pop that back in there, like that. Now, we also have a sterling silver dip pen holder. Uh, and this is made by the very famous company of Samson Morden and Co. And I'll see if I can get it to focus on that. Hold on. There we go. S. Morden and Company, Sterling. So, there we are. Uh, this, again, did not come with the box. Uh, this is from my personal collection of uh, antique writing equipment. And uh, so I put that into the box. And when the box was new, it would have come with something like this anyway. So, that just goes in there. Now, an interesting thing is that this is actually spring-loaded. There's a... Uh, button up the top there and uh, if I press on it this jumps forward like that very nice then here we have the original inkwell which came with the box uh, the inkwells are very very tricky to find um, if you don't get the inkwell that came with the box originally then all I can say is good luck because finding the original glass screw top solid brass Victorian writing box inkwells is almost impossible um, if you're looking for the originals I mean I think you can buy reproductions on like eBay and stuff but if you're looking for the real antique ones these are almost impossible to find um, everyone I've spoken to uh, tells me that they are really hard to find 
and in nearly 30 years of hunting writing boxes, I've only come across three of them in like 20 years of searching. So they're really hard to find. So I'm very glad that this has the original ink well. Uh, then over here, this little slot is for your uh, postage stamps. You would just chuck them in there and then you just peel it out like that. In the middle we have the uh, pen rest curved inwards so that your pen doesn't roll around everywhere. Then you pop it up like that and you can put all your bits and pieces in there. Then at the front we have the Aid Memoir uh, on really, really, really nice boxes. These were made of ivory or they were made of the new plastic celluloid. Uh, this is just waxed card, uh, like what you would find on a, uh, on a uh, greetings card today. And then this folds down. And here we have the writing surface, uh, comprised of the lower portion with the uh, security latch here at the front, and then the upper portion, which opens like so. Now, you'll remember that I said that these boxes all had fabric hinges. Now, that's not entirely true, uh, but it is mostly true. Uh, up the top here, you'll see it has nice, strong brass hinges and catches and locks and all that kind of stuff. But down here, this is all leather. And the moment this rots away, the box just falls apart. And uh, there's absolutely no way, there's nothing you can do to repair that because once it happens, if you want to do it properly, you have to remove every single piece of leather. And then you have to put every single piece of leather back. And I don't know anyone who could do that or who would do that. Uh, so when I bought this box, um, someone had done what I think is the next best thing and quite honestly, you know, quite honestly, I think this is a forgivable thing. I mean, because there's not, there's absolutely no other way you can do this. But uh, when I bought the box, someone, I don't know who, I don't think it was the seller, but uh, someone had taken very adhesive black uh, electrical tape and had gone across here and then had done the same thing on the other side and gone across here and then they reinforced it with uh, black thread, basically sewing the box together and sticking it together again. Uh, and this is basically the only way that you can repair these unless you're willing to rip off all the leather and all the fabric and do it all over again, uh, which would be almost impossible. I mean, this leather is very hard to find. It's very expensive. This is, this is book binding leather. This is basically what it is. Um, so you can imagine how expensive that is. I mean, for a book, okay, you can, might, you could, uh, get one or two sheets, but to cover the entire box inside and out uh, would be prohibitively expensive. Uh, so anyway, that's my little tour of my mid-1880s, uh, late Victorian era writing box. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more of the stuff which I write about and which I collect, then please visit my blog. Uh, the link is in the description below. Thank you very much for watching.